How about you? I'm Hank. Welcome to Hamiltonville Farm. Today we're changing the cutting teeth on the Woodland Mills PTO Stump Grinder. Hey, if this is your first time to Hamiltonville Farm, I want to say welcome. We appreciate you stopping by. We've got a great channel here. We do a lot of tractor videos. We do videos on tractor maintenance, tractor accessories, things like this. And so that's what the kind of content you can expect to see when you tune into our videos. So if you like that kind of content, tractors, homesteading, that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to be part of our community. We'd appreciate it. It takes two seconds, totally 100% free. In today's video, we're gonna actually change the teeth on the WG24 Woodland Mill Stump Grinder. By the end of the video, you will be able to change the teeth on your stump grinder as well. And Brandel, who is the master mechanic here at Hamiltonville Farm. I'm the master of everything, I think, right? <laughs> you are. Master welder, master mechanic, yeah. just not a master yeah. tractor operator. Have you I ever suppose. noticed how when I do something that requires something that requires some type of uh, confidence, I always ask Brandel to be in my videos? I mean, it is true, <laughs> I can see that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, see, there's, there's, a, there's a, pattern a pattern. There is a pattern there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Brandel's actually going to walk us through how we how we're going to change these teeth on this Woodland Mills stump grinder. So we appreciate you watching. Stay around because I'm telling you, there's going to be a part in this video that we're going to talk about that you're not going to want to miss. Okay? When you're changing the teeth, the cutting teeth on your Woodland Mills stump grinder, there's some ter certain tools that you'll need and some certain tools that you may or may not have to kind of fabricate i guess you'd say so brandon what what did you bring with us and what tell us how we're going to operate all this stuff all right so what we've got basically we've just got a, a screwdriver and a hammer the way that the stump grinder is obviously because it's going to be in the wood all the time uh, some of the pockets are going to be stopped up with wood so we're just going to use that to knock those out okay we've got a long ratchet with a 15 16 socket you can use a 15 16 or a 24 millimeter they're super interchangeable so this is going to make getting several of the teeth out easier however there's one orientation that is going to be super not super necessary all right so i've actually built a special wrench to make it a little bit easier to get in um, and it's not necessarily easier to get in uh, to access it, it's actually going to make it easier to torque it. Because of the nature of the way that the stump grinder works, we want to make sure that we get it to full torque value at 160 foot-pounds. We've got our torque wrench. Again, we want to have that set at 160 foot-pounds, so that's going to be our final tightening sequence. Sure. We've got two pry bars, lady slipper bars. You can use anything just to basically stop right, the right. wheel from yeah, turning. Sure, sure. And then of course we've got our teeth. So we're going to replace three teeth on the sump grinder so we can get a full set, not a full set, but six teeth at a time from Woodland Mills. So they're a spare part that you can get from them. Now the cool thing about these teeth are they actually last forever. Uh, but the, the stump grinder that we're actually using, Brandel bought used, and so we really didn't, I guess you didn't really didn't know the history behind it, so yeah. to speak. So, you know, if you start working in rocks, uh, rocky condition and stuff like that, they obviously eat the teeth a little faster. And so, but if you're just going to be strictly working on wood, your teeth are going to last forever, basically. But we're going to go ahead and show you how to change these teeth out. So step one is actually going to be taking off the teeth. Okay. So what, if you notice, we've actually got three different orientations here. We've got one orientation that's straight against the the wheel okay we've got one at 45 and we've got one at 90. so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a bar we're going to lock the bar in and then we're going to use our 15 sixteenths or our 24 millimeter okay. socket and then we're going to just break that tooth loose all right sure easy enough easy enough and then once we get it broken loose just hammer the tooth out and i shouldn't take any hammering at all it should just pop right out and then just pop the new one in. That's it. Now that we've got the nut off, we'll just tap it out. Well, that's simple enough. Easy enough, right? Yeah. The reason why we're replacing this one is because the nut was really badly worn and I didn't want it to get any more damage. Sure and you know possibly break off lose a tooth right, while right. we're while we're in the middle of work sure. so that's why we're replacing this guy so now that we've got the flat orientation tooth 
removed, we'll put the new one in and then we'll move to the, the 45 degree orientation. Now these orientations are the same throughout the blade, is that correct? Yep, there's only three orientations. They're kind of staggered different ways. I've actually not paid attention that much to see if there is a pattern, but they there, there are only three orientations. Okay, so gotcha. it's easy enough to, to knock out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use anti-seize on your tooth. Woodland Mills doesn't exactly say that it's necessary, but I like it to be preventative. So that way it's not going to get stuck in the hole, make it easy to, to knock out. We have to make sure that we get our orientation right. So what we're going to do, we're going to put it in the hole like that, put our nut on the back side of it, and make sure that you don't get everyone's favorite man glitter all over you because <laughs> that's, of course, what happens with anti-seize, right? Then we're going to go back, put our pry bar in, and then torque this to 160 foot-pounds. So now we've got it torqued to 160 foot-pounds. We got the flat orientation done now. Which one are we gonna do next? So now, Hank, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to this 45 orientation here. This one's a little bit more difficult to get off than the flat face orientation, but it still shouldn't be a problem with a regular 15 16 socket or wrench. Okay. Hey, real quick before we do that, uh, I don't, so you're, we're three, four, five minutes into this video. I haven't edited it out yet, so I don't know how far we are. So if you're still watching, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you hit that subscribe button for no other reason than the fact that we talked Brandel into wearing a pink hat during this video. That's it. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> So the more subscribers we get, the more videos that we'll have with me with a pink hat. Right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. We had mentioned earlier in the video about something special we're going to mention while we're doing this particular project. So we're almost to that point, so keep watching. So now we've got the 45 orientation. The best thing, it seems like, a short socket gives you clearance here. And always try to make sure that you get it put your locking tool somewhere in the vicinity that you're going to get as much clearance as possible. And again, I don't anticipate much force to be needed here. So that came off pretty easily. I think this one's just going to fall right out. All right, I think you're right. I don't think yeah, I can see to, it moving. Yeah, I don't think we're going to need the hammer at all here. Well, put your finger there anyway. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yep, there we go. That just popped right out. Nothing to it but to do it there. Again, we're using this Permatex uh, anti-seize lubricant. That's going to help the, uh, again, Woodland Mills don't require it, but it is going to help with the heat and the friction and all that good stuff. So we want to make sure that we've got a good seating surface. Make sure that all of the dust, dirt, debris is cleaned off both surfaces, the front and the back, before you go to insert your tooth. And again, make sure to pay attention to the proper orientation. And you can see there's a mounting pocket in here as well that the tooth falls into. So you can see how that that works. All right, it was All right so we've tightened it by hand. Now we're just going to go in and apply our final 160 foot pounds of torque to it. That's number two. So on to number three and our special tool. Remember earlier I talked about uh, the pretty special part of the video that's coming up. Well, this is what I'm talking about here because Brandel has actually done something that it really helps us save money. You know, we can go out and we can spend 80 bucks on specialty tools or Brandel, tell us what you made here. So this is actually called a torque adapter. It's widely available, or maybe not widely available, but it's available from tool companies such as Snap-on. This from Snap-on costs $70. But basically what I did is I took a 15 16 wrench, cut the box end off, welded a socket to it, and then that makes our special tool for money that I, or for items that I already had sitting around my toolbox that I weren't wasn't using. So let me let me stop you right there, Brandon. This is a really cool part to introduce 
Brandel's new channel. Now Brandel's actually going to start a YouTube channel and so we're going to want you to go over there and we're going to want you to subscribe because he shows us in detail how to do stuff like that. What's the channel name? So it's called TTWM, Tinker Tractor Welder Mechanic. So we don't know what we're doing but we try to do the best we can. <laughs> And I would really appreciate a subscription. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, he always comes over here and he helps and stuff. So let's go over there. Let's help him by subscribing to his channel. I'll put the link to his channel right here. Thanks a bunch. All right, so this is the reason why that we had to make this torque adapter. You can see how easily the torque adapter sits in, gives us room clearance here sure. to, to get our ratchet on or our torque wrench on. You can see, actually, we don't have any, there's no chance at all of getting a socket on there. So instead of just, you know, putting a wrench on and hoping that we get to a good torque value, we're going to use this guy. And it actually is, um, it's going to make it a whole lot easier to take off as well. Sure. Instead of using a wrench that only is maybe, yeah. you know, 10 inches or so, we're actually going to use our big 24 inch ratchet to get it off as well. Gotcha. So see, that makes it pretty easy there. Now that we've got it going with our ratchet, then we can switch to a wrench and get it off the rest of the way. There you go. So how do you like this teamwork we got going on over here? Man, teamwork makes the dream work. I'm telling you. It's like somebody holding the key. Hey, listen. And not once have we got it on your hands or my hands. Hey, that, well, no, I'm oh, hey. Just, <laughs> hey, The thing is, you know, like a little, little Saturday night gold dust action right there, you know? Now let me ask you something as you put this one in. Does this one, ha that tooth have to be pointed in that direction? So yeah, so the stump grinder only goes one way. So that's why that we want to make sure that we match all of our orientations. We can see, well, we can't yes, really I, I saw, see. Yeah, you can see it. You yeah. know, yeah. yeah. So we absolutely want to make sure because it's, it's directly driven from the PTO of the tractor. Sure. So it just bends straight from the PTO. Now, can, is there a possibility that you can put these in backwards? There's a hundred percent possibility okay. you can put it in backwards. You can actually put it in four different ways. Yeah. So, so would it behoove Woodland Mills to consider like a like, like a key? A, like a key, yeah, that yeah. would be great. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So the nice thing about the torque adapter is it's not only for the torque wrench, you can also use it by hand. There you go. The way that you actually use a torque adapter is you have to make sure that it's going to be 90 degrees to the axis of your torque wrench. You can't use it like this. You can't use it like this. It has to be 90 degrees to the pull of your torque wrench so that you make sure to get the, tor the correct torque value. So when you're, you're, when you're doing this, make sure that you use it correctly. Now that we've got the three teeth changed, we're going to demonstrate how they cut a little better when you've got new teeth on to your on your cutting blade. But the, check out, I mean, check them out, man. Holy moly! So the surface of this tooth actually wasn't worn that badly, but you can see the nut was actually mm -hmm. completely wore down. So that was one of the main reasons why we changed this one specifically to make sure, sure. that we wouldn't lose it. Woodland Mills, whenever I contacted them, they actually said that you can sharpen these teeth oh, right if, you, um, if you use a special uh, disc. I think it's a silicone carbide disc okay. that you can dress them a little bit. But my, my grinder is used infrequently enough that I can go ahead and replace a few teeth every now yeah, and yeah. then. So it's not a production machine. Yeah, there you go. And the thing about these teeth that, you know, you saw how easy it was to interchange them. And they sell them in sets of six, if I'm not mistaken. Is that yeah, right? That's it. Yeah, they're available from Woodland Mills on their website as a six pack. And also, if you buy your stump grinder, they give you the option immediately on purchase to go ahead and buy six packs too. All right on. And we'll leave Woodland Mills website in the link in the description below. Let's just see how effective these new teeth are. We're going to go cut a stump, show you how these things just rip through wood, and let's, uh, let's get to it. Have fun. And with a stump this size, you pretty much can get the middle of it here.
Now you can see these, these teeth did a really good job on this little oak stuff that we had. But there's some considerations that you need to think about, not just the type of wood, right? Yeah, that's it. So here in Northwest Florida, we've got kind of a mixture of sand, clay, kind right. of loamy soil. So for us, we don't really hit a lot of rocks. So sure. we don't have a lot of the, those chip damage. But what we do have is we've got basically just sandpaper hitting our teeth yeah, all that's the time. Right. Yeah. So like places like Middle Tennessee, where I used to live, they grow rocks there. So You're a Southern really, guy? I am a Southern guy. Oh, I, I, mean, I didn't you, notice. That. Yeah, you could have never told it with my accent, right? <laughs> but yeah, you know, you've got to really watch out for the rocks and stuff like that. So there's a lot of yeah. considerations, not just the durability of the teeth in terms of how many stumps can you cut, but what kind of cutting conditions. Yeah, are absolutely. As well. So we appreciate you watching this video. As always, there's going to be this little white barn pop up over here. If you click on that, it'll take you to our subscribe page. And underneath that is a playlist of tractor videos where Brandle and I do a lot of things around Hamiltonville Farm. But the cool thing about it now is you can actually go to Brandle's channel. Tell us again what the channel is. So it's TTWM, Tinker Tractor Welder Mechanic, where we don't know what we're doing, but we try to do our best at it. <laughs> yeah, so go check out Brandle. Let's get his channel up and, and growing, and he can put out some good videos for your entertainment. Okay, you guys take care. We'll catch you on the next one.